Well, hello world. Welcome to Raccoon Point Studios. I'm Sean Bombs, and today we are going to mic up these drums and record them onto a four-track cassette tape machine. It is a Porta Studio 424 MK3. Um, this is part of a series where I'm going to go through the workflow of trying to record on a four-track cassette, what it would be like if you grew up at the time that I did before we had uh, DAWs in the, uh, that were attainable and computers strong enough to handle all this stuff. And when I was coming up, I didn't have like a mixer so I could blend a bunch of mics together and now I have a console. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, so we're in the control room now and here is the task cam. It's actually a really good piece of equipment. Uh, I'm surprised. The EQs on here work really good. Everything works really good. I got this used on reverb and whoever had it really took care of it, so. Whoever you are out there, thank you. We're gonna go uh, the first eight channels and we're gonna bus those to one of the buses down here. And then from out of that, we're gonna send the bus into the task cam. So what's, what's gonna happen here on the Porta Studio is we are going to go into five and six back here they might look the same as the other channels, but five and six have a different impedance in the back. So what's gonna happen is stereo input five and six, that's going to be bust to track one and two because that's how I'm gonna have to record it um, because you only have four tracks. The line output will be fed back in to Pro Tools through my burls that way we can hear everything in real time, and then I'll be able to mix everything down from here into Pro Tools, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's a lot. It's definitely a lot for me to talk about. So before we record drums, I'm going to do a scratch guitar on channel four. I'm also going to record a click track from Pro Tools into channel three, and that way we'll have something to uh, reference the drums with, and you know, so I'm not just playing whatever. Uh, and that's that. So that's what we're going to do right now. We did it. All right, going downstairs to record drums. All right, so I'm ready to track the drums. Hopefully I get it in the first take. I don't play the drums, like it's not my instrument, but I can play. I'm gonna do the best I can to get this in one take. So we have the four track here and I have the iPad here so I can trigger record in Pro Tools. The cool thing about this four track is the guitar and the click track are on three and four, but uh, if I wanted to bus five and six to one and two, which I'm doing, then these would come with it and I don't want that. So I'm, I have the faders down. I'm using the tape cues so I can hear what I'm playing to and it won't bust to the, to the drums. So now I'm gonna hit record in Pro Tools. Wish me luck, wish me luck, all right? Wish me luck. We'll keep that one, all right? That's it. All right, so now I have printed the tape version of the drums into Pro Tools and I have these level matched uh, the best I could and they're, it's gonna be different because the tape compresses so the RMS is going to be different. The peaks aren't as drastic as they are with the digital print, but I did use the Burl converter to capture the tape I did not send it back through the console for this. I wanted it to be as close as possible. Pro Tools is green and the four track is blue.
All right. So as I said, drumming is not my instrument, but I can play enough to get ideas out. I think they both sounded good in their own way. Um, the tape definitely had more of a pillowy sound to it. It wasn't as abrasive when the kick hit. Um, if you look at the waveforms, it's obvious that the tape is compressing. So you can see the peaks and valleys of the digital version is definitely more drastic, whereas the tape is like just looks like sausages, you know? And definitely more meat in the middle of it. All right, so now I am going to play guitar at the same time singing, and I'm using five for the guitar, six for the vocal, and then they are being bussed to channel three. So it's going to be sharing a mono track, which isn't ideal, but this is the nature of four tracks. I'm using the Q outputs, which will send the drums and the guitar that's already recorded to my headphones. Nothing can accidentally be erased. So I'm getting the playback without anything being possibly being bounced to another track. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Ready? All right, so now we're gonna track bass during the mix down because that's the only way I'm gonna get a bass on this. Back in the day, I had a Techniques dual cassette tape that I would have recorded the final mix down onto that. Probably not the best way to do it, but that's all I had as I was a teenager. And here we go, let's do it. And that would be the mix down. So now we're going to take that, bring it a little bit up to level and bounce it down. I just put an SSL bus compressor on it and a Manly just to get a little bit of clarity and then Pro L2.
that's where it falls the part. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So hopefully this was entertaining or useful to somebody out there. Um, if you're thinking about getting into four track recording and tape, um, there are a lot of limitations. There's a lot of thinking, um, pre-planning you have to do. And the limitations are cool because, you know, you can make mistakes and some of them are forever there and you don't go back and fix them and all that kind of stuff. So you have your moment. And that was what recording is, is you're making a record (laughs) of a moment in time. So, you know, with modern uh, production, we have unlimited track counts basically and uh, unlimited playlists that we can comp from and get the best takes with tape you uh, get what you give and it takes a little bit away (laughs) but it also adds some stuff too so you you know you get the compression of tape and all that stuff and a vibe Um, and yeah it's just fun you have to like really just go all out and boom you have your moment in time and you know I'm still cracking this thing open but i think i'm getting there now with it if uh you're into this kind of stuff hit the like hit the bell stay notified subscribe to the channel if you're not already thank you to all my new subscribers we are on our way to 2,000 subscribers so subscribe and help us get there because you know i can keep making videos like this or not whichever one but i'll see you in the next one bye bye